So where is Europe? Uh, Europe has always been considered as the climate negotiation champion. It's universal. Uh, Europe has always, always led the global climate agenda. I, I'm sorry for, for being pragmatic, but I don't think it was just uh, a matter of ethics or principle. I think it was much more a matter of economics. Europe understood a few years ago that uh, her climate and energy policy could benefit from such sustainability pathway. It's a matter of economics. When I talk about climate and energy policy, it's because energy accounts for two-thirds of the world greenhouse gas emission in terms of production and consumption of energy, so the vast majority of it. Uh, thanks to its climate and energy package, the famous 2020 back in 2009, uh, today the European renewable energy sector alone uh, employ about one million person and has a, a global turnover of 130 billion euros per year. These are official data from the Commission. Thanks to its effort in this field, in renewables, energy efficiency, and carbon reduction, Europe has also become the world leader in renewable energy technologies. If you see the data related to patent registered in so-called key technologies, you will see that Europe, over the last few years, has been the global leader. No one is as good as us. But, there's always a but, uh, Europe is losing its pace. Europe recently has not been able to harness the international positive momentum to bring about significant reforms, significant innovation in its energy and climate policies. And we are losing competitiveness even in those energy technologies that was you know, a premium for, for, for us. Today Europe imports 90% of its crude oil, 90%, 66% of its natural gas, 42% of its coal and other solid fossil fuel, and more or less 40% of its nuclear fuel. These data are again official. Mm, this cost us about 1 billion per day, more or less 400 billion a year, if, if you see the magnitude of this number. Uh, the energy import dependency from outside also strongly, obviously, affects uh, the security of our energy supply. As 2009 gas crisis thought, as recent Ukraine crisis is teaching, in perspective, we might think to uh, buy more gas from US that is starting to export natural gas thanks to the shale gas revolution. US is now energetically independent, which is quite a huge revolution if you think that from a geopolitical point of view. Uh, in fact, and I'm really scared in saying that, European energy is shaped, is driven by outside forces. We are having someone else decide our own energy policy. The result of this is that European industries pay electricity two times as much as US and gas three times as much. Only Japan is worse than us. Uh, these data provide you a, quite a clear understanding of the necessity, of the urgency, I would say, of giving you impetus to our climate and energy policy. Energy security, affordability, emission reduction, energy independency, uh, the fight against energy poverty. There are millions of Europeans that bear in condition of energy poverty. They cannot maintain their home at 20 degrees Celsius. They are energy poverty. Uh, are all embedded within the concept of European Energy Union. All of these concepts are, ha, has a name, has a title, which is European Energy Union. 